Hello friends and a very warm welcome to today's video where it will be a deep dive into the art of arranging, in this case electronic music. I'm going to be picking up where I left off in the previous week's live stream and if you've missed part one and two of this journey through uh, making an electronic music track, I'll pop somewhere up here or over here a video to the previous stream so you can go back and catch up on how we arrived to where we are at the moment. Um, the plan of action is to uncover the secrets of cap crafting, captivating and engaging song arrangements um, and try and avoid the most common pitfalls that a lot of uh, people end up doing in their music productions. Simply probably not enough movement. That's a kind of common pitfall in many amateur produced songs inside of the track arrangements. There's just simply not enough movement. So without further ado, enjoy this week's live stream. Stick around and let's dive in. Also, if you have any comments or questions as we go along, feel free to pop them in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them. And of course, there's always a little bit of a favor as we go. Um, if someone could let me know that the levels are fine, if you're here in the stream, that would be amazing. First up the microphone that you can hear me okay, and then we'll also check in on the music as well. So just a quick recap, I'm just going to loop up over here the peak of the song that we moved over from the session view, and it sounds like this. Right, and the goal at the moment is to, as I said, craft a captivating arrangement. And what we did sort of towards the end of last week's stream is got up to about this point here at the end of 49, 57 bars, if we're counting bars, or if we're looking at it in 16 bar phrases, where well, we've done two lots of 32, so uh, doing the mass there, 48, we're now into another lot of 16 here. And we're kind of trying to feel out if and when we need a break. So we've got this scene over here that was copied over from the session view, put a marker there, we've called it the break, and it is a break kind of scene. So if we listen to this, it should be a bit of a breakdown. Right, and the kind of idea is, are we connecting up to that? Are we working towards that? Does it need a break there? And then we're working our way onto this next section of the arrangement and then onto the peak bridge all the way to the outro today. Good afternoon, Xavi Diaz in the chat there. Sounding good, great. Thank you very much for letting me know. I always appreciate the feedback. All right, so let's loop up the end of where I was at the end of the previous week's live stream. Let's have a listen to what we have there. Right, so I'm going to say that we're going to, we, I did push the break further forwards because I think we don't need to break it down yet here. So what I'm going to do is copy some parts over so that we can continue the arrangement here. So let's have the kick pattern there. Um, the bass line can continue across. Also the clap. Um, the tabla we might see actually, perhaps this is the first opportunity to remove it for a little bit um, as it's been playing since earlier on here, since bar 33. We also have this pad drone coming across and we've introduced the melody here. And this is something that doesn't concern me at the moment, but it's something that I might sort of work on a little bit because the sooner I bring something like that in and give it away, um, the more that I need to think about, you know, if I'm still using it all the way up to here, that it's still going to remain interesting. And they're those kind of questions that you need to ask yourself as you go along. I also have a vocal in this project since the very beginning that I've not actually done anything with at this point in time. So today I'm going to do a little composition with that, see if I can flush out a little bit of an idea, a use case for it. Um, so also we want to turn on our automation and just have a look here at what was being automated and how it's going to affect, you know, getting in the flow again today and kicking across 
you know, what's going on here and are we continuing those themes again over? So let's say we now loop up this little area either side of the phrase change. So I think the tabla is kind of cool coming out there. So that's going to give us a break from that. Is it lacking something? It feels more stripped, but let's say what happens if we bring in this percussion. We could, or we could also look at the previous pattern here. So there's two versions of this. I might do what I did with the pad drone so you can kind of see because there's numbers in these and these clips are called number one and then there's number two over here so now that we have a different color they are different variations of the percussion so let's try one maybe here see if we need that or whether that adds something there that's interesting Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. And let's see what happens if we copy the MIDI over for the melody. But again, I'm trying to sort of like, you know, not give too much away just yet. So what can we kind of reduce this down to perhaps? Maybe even just some notes of it. Okay, so I've got an idea here just to work with what we have, but just as I said, spice it up a little bit and have a little bit of a change or two in here. Okay, so that kind of just gives it a little bit of a variation from what was going on here. Open this back out. Let's have a look at the bass automation as well. Check in on that. So if we are going for a break, we could maybe open this up a lot more. Maybe this drone a little bit before the break opens up and then comes back down again. adjusting things around a little bit so you know there's there's a quote about sort of it's easier to take things away than keep adding things right and this is a classic example here where you may not have thought to take the tabla away this percussion loop that's been going since the start 
you you often just tempted to just keep it going but in this case taking it away there the same as what had happened with the other percussion loop it was removed for the period that the tabla was there we're kind of giving ourselves a break from that it's also creating little drops and tension changes and it means potentially when we bring that back in at some point it'll have more impact again we'll be aware that it's back or we're aware that it's gone and those kind of things are really valuable So let's say we now see about this being a break here. And so what might we do? We might have the um, percussion two, I think we'll keep that up our sleeve so that's still over here to be introduced at some point. I don't think we need that there. Uh, tablas out, which is fine, so we can kind of remove the MIDI from there. Chords might be interesting to have something of the chords in here just to introduce that character, it could be an option. Uh, and the melody, maybe this little clip that I just built here, which I kind of quite like, so let me consolidate that. And let's give that a new color just so we're aware that that's sort of something different as well we might just give that a new number or just say new something like that and that might be more what happens in this space here let's see so i'm going to drag that over and this actually is another version it's not actually this version here because I can see that in the MIDI, it's another variation of that. That's a variation and that's another variation. So we could perhaps call this number three as well, if we like some sort of strip version. So let's maybe carry the melody over like that. Okay, let's have the percussion across. And let's say we take this bass down from its build up here and might come down earlier than that. Because I kind of feel like here, I might try something. kind of idea there. Hopefully most of you know how to do this curved automation shape, just in case you don't. If you hover below uh, a line between, let's say, two automation points, you notice that the color changes of the line. And if you hover below a line, you can then hold on a Mac, it's the Alt Option key or be the Alt key on a Windows keyboard. You can hold that down and you'll see that little curved bracket pops up and then you can click down on your mouse and pull down or pull up depending on which shape curved you want. And of course they sound different. That sounds completely different to a linear. So it's kind of exponential curves when you have it like this and it's linear when it's straight and they sound different. So it can be a nice way to introduce a filter sound a bit different to, or a sound of automation differently. Let's copy our clap. So just in this area here, let's have our, what I've been doing this theme previously. Let's have everything, the automation as well as the pattern. Let's paste that in here. Miss the automation, I'll fix that in a moment. Okay, let's try again. Actually quite like that clap there. Let's try maybe the kick out, just one of these kicks. A bit more interesting. Let's 
I also think it's good that this pad drone is kind of the automations kind of right down. And I think almost this could be out. And let's see if we drop the chords in, but we do something a bit different with the chords. So let's say for starters, we definitely have the gate turned off. So I'm going to aut that, automate the gate that chops up these chords. I'm going to automate that to switch on later. So what I want to do here is see all parameters and I want to see gate device on. And in here, we're going to have it off. Okay, which it currently is. And then later, it can come on at whatever point we do that. So now we've got kind of sustain chords. And maybe we can thin them right out here. So if we take the third interval out of them, we would end up with a very unemotional like the third of third note of a triad the third interval in the middle there is the interval that provides us with the emotion right major minor sus augmented the different chord shapes so when you remove that third you end up with very much like a bit more of a pad or a drone And also what I might do is bring them down an octave in this area. Yeah, maybe not. And let's say we kind of have a little bit of automation to control how it comes in and sort of transpires there. So let's look a little bit of what we've got automation wise in the instruments of frequency has an envelope, an LFO. Maybe I can use the instruments frequency, filter frequency. Let's have a look at that. It's just uh, using it to bring this in. Change the shape of this a little bit, perhaps. You're getting a nice bit of tension out of that. kind of move these points around a little bit to line up with the start of the notes, right? So that was what I was kind of doing there, just to make the filter react a bit to where the notes start and end. Okay, so the very end of this break, maybe a bit of percussion out.
maybe we can do something with this rim that uh, doesn't currently happen so we can make a little bit of a fill here perhaps with the rim shots Let's see, can we, yeah, we can't kind of take it that way, but we try something because it's inside the drum rack. We might try a little bit of automation of the transposition of this. So what I want to do is go into the rim shot and I want to find the control page transposition here. And let's see about pitching this down a little bit. kind of cool we might reuse that as well so again you know making little parts like this that might be something so I'm going to consolidate that into a little clip give it a new color and that might be something I might revisit um, and recycle use somewhere else so yeah good to come up with little pieces Just want to try this drone back in for a second. If I want more tension, this could be here as well. Apologies for the small loop, but <laughs> sometimes we need to work in these kind of little detailed uh, sections like this. By the way, if you're here in the live stream with me today on this Sunday afternoon here in Ibiza, do say hello, drop, drop a hello in the chat. Let me know where you're listening to it from. And if you've got any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat and I'll do my best to, to answer them. fine-tuning this a little bit it may come back out again it doesn't have to be there but it adds again a little bit more if we feel that we wish to have that energy or that tension in there I do think it's interesting but I still want to bring it down to a more subtle Right, cool. So now post this area of this break. So we've now incorporated the break. Let's go backwards a bit and kind of feel out if it feels like it makes sense where it is and what happens with it. Does it kind of, did we need to break the, the track down there? Obviously in a live stream here, I don't want to keep going back to the very start and playing all the way through as that's a bit, uh, you know, 
boring in a sense of having to listen at some point we'll need to go back that far but let's say from here we try and sort of feel out does that break make sense and is it creating some sort of interest there because breaks they need to serve a purpose you don't need to have breaks in your track at all but if you add them there then make sure they're doing something that adds a purpose is it creating more tension to what comes afterwards is it helping you break down what happened before it that was a bit hectic we now want to calm it down and then build it back up again or we're trying to cause like you know a certain feeling here because essentially we're pausing things or taking away energy here so if you're on the dance floor or in a club or something does the break make sense where it's happening and what's it doing What I might try is also not the two version of the pad drone here because they are quite different. We'll have the sequence one and see what that feels like. And I also want to bring this chord down a little bit more on the intro. It's softer. Nice, that has the feeling I'm looking for. So for the moment, it feels okay to have broken down there and there's a bit of tension at the end here, building back up to say, okay, hit me with what you've got next. And what we've got next is kind of connecting up another section, let's say verse two now of the track. So we've kind of worked our way along for verse one over that period of time, we've broken it down a bit. And now we've got this section all the way over to the peak here. So let's say that we've got um, for the moment, and I also think, what is it, eight bar breakdown? It could be 16 bars, but I kind of feel like the eight bar was interesting. So for now, I'm going to keep it as eight bars. So let's add some markers here just to get a bit of clarity on where we're heading. So that would be the next lot of, this is halfway through a 16 bar section, correct? Then we're into here, so we could kind of call this verse two here. And that's 16 bars of it. It's probably going to go for 32 till about here. And then we might have, as the peak is a bit further along, that might come over to here. Or we might have a bit of a pre-chorus or something like that where we kind of do a little pre into the peak. Well, actually, yeah, that might not make sense, but we could make it make it sense. Okay, so let's have the baseline across, carry that over. Uh, let's have the claps through that section for now. Um, let's say here we might reveal too soon. Tabla might come back. Perhaps we'll keep that for later, nearer to the peak. And Let's see, we might keep this to come back later near, I think in the break. So we might carry across here, more of the sequence version of the pad drone and the melody. So we've got a few different clips of it here. So what we could do is maybe bring this one much later and we might have a kind of theme that happens here where we use this a few times. Try that out perhaps. And also the chords, a question of whether we're going to stick with these non-sustain chords for a bit post the break, see what it feels like when they are removed or coming in. So let's have a listen. So 
So what have we got here? We might just copy up a little bit the starts over here of where I first brought the base in. We'll kind of bring it back in low again here. Mustn't have copied it. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. So we get the point. 163, 163, so we're kind of at that same point there on the baseline. Okay. We could even have this workflow here of the automation of the base that could continue. So trying here, let's say we take the melody out and the chords continue. So what that feels like. Copy and paste that theme as well here. Just had a bit of a, an idea here, whether it's a good one or not. I hear maybe this at the end here, sort of building up. Yeah, it's actually the opposite of this pattern here. So. So we've got a few patterns of the melody to choose from. One of the patterns that uh, is coming in later in the bridge is over here where I've kind of reversed things around, but maybe I'll do something else there and use that here because I think this could work quite well. I'm just going to try this out. Exactly, that's what I kind of had in my head. Okay, so right there, I'd like to have a little bit of my friendly theme happening here, which is this little part that I created in last week's stream, which is a little clap with a bit of a automated delay on it. Let's try and copy it all over there. There we go.
copy of a kick change up here, which incorporates this little bit of a change up here. Which let me just check what it, that actually is. Is it to do with automation? Maybe not. So what was that actually? Uh, it's removal of some of the kicks. Okay, could be an option. Let's try it where I've copied and pasted it. If not, I'd be going for something that I've used a little bit like just removing here, a little bit of a transition there for the change here of the phrase. So why does my chord stop there is the interesting one. Okay, so it's got to be that the gate automation is what's affecting that, I believe. So let's just check that. So yeah, let's keep that off until we want it later. So now we should hear the chords. Let's keep this bass automation workflow happening here. Okay, so let's do a little bit of housekeeping here. So that gate device on off, let's just give that its own little lane so we don't get confused there. We could take away this chord progression one here because we've got copies of that to the right. And also we've got two over there as well. So we have plenty of options to find that again. Oh, hang on a sec. There's plenty of twos. Is there another one? Perhaps not. So we'll keep that over there for now take away that two from there and the vocal well there is a vocal here so let's have a little play with this and see if we can come up with some sort of like little fxe part for it because at the moment i've got this kind of repeating little clap uh phrase that i made this little clap with the delay it's actually a reverb sorry not delay so i kind of made that little impact ish hit change the pattern a bit as well and that i've been using at different points of in time for phrase changes etc but it'd be nice to maybe have something else a little reverse element or something that i can also use around the timeline here so let's say the vocals down here and i never really wanted to use this like the whole sample where it's just like this just to show you uh, let's get that solo off up there. So maybe that's an idea for the bridge now that I stole the melody change. So perhaps I bring the full vocal in, but not right now. So I'm going to make a MIDI track below it. I'm going to try one of my favorite tools, which is the granulator instrument. Let's drop that in. And in Ableton 12, it's had an update. It's a granulator three and it's, um, yeah, I would say it's a nice update. It makes it kind of a, a little bit easier perhaps to understand some of the things it's going to do, it can do. So I'm going to drag and just drop my vocal straight in to the granulator like so. And I'm going to create a small MIDI clip here. And we are in G, G minor, I think actually, not C major. So let's put the project into G minor put the scale on here and I think I just want a G for the moment question is where maybe just a little note like that and 
that's kind of what I'm looking for almost, right? So, you know, putting a vocal into a granulator like this and then playing around with the grain size, the scan, etc. You can get these, this really nice kind of little FX vocal piece, as you can hear, that um, is simply made with a little bit of popping the, the vocal into granulator and then tweaking it to your desired point. And if we move the position, we can scan around through the vocal, right? So if you're looking at how to use the granulator, this knob here, decides where you are in the sample. I like where I've landed. Scan then spreads out. As you can see, like where it's going, sifting through the, the file. So that would be very repetitive on that point. Scan means it's traveling a bit around the sample a bit more. And then grain size is how small the, the, the grain is. So the bigger it is, the more again, sample it, it moves through. I like that. We can also repitch it a bit if we want. And if we shorten up the note, we'll get a lot less of the sample as well, right? Quite like that. Okay, and now let's refine that a little bit so we have a little bit of um, delay and reverb. We could use the send and returns, but I might actually just do a little bit of sound design directly on it behind the, the granulator and just gonna get this to sound the way I'd like it to sound. So again, if you're here in the live stream with me today, do say hello, drop a comment in the chat or ask a question if there's something you wanna know about. Um, I'm arranging this song today and working my way through this electronica track. This is part three of a series of videos. Um, I will drop a card early in the stream to the previous videos if you wanna check in with those to understand kind of where I'm working from. Okay, so. sound kind of nice natural kind of tail can also use the filter in here to just adjust this a little bit Give it a little 
little bit of spatial feel to it. Let's have an EQ on it as well. Clean it up. Okay, so all of that work with the granulator and the vocal just to create this kind of little FXy part. And then what I might do is just set up an audio track below it and let's just render at least a couple of these to, to audio. So we want this to listen to the granulator track, record arm it, and then let's set it up to record a few of those. Okay, just one mistake there, so we'll just undo that. We need to turn this tractor in, that's important. And let's turn the 11 off so we don't hear double the input. And now we should be good to go. It's just a bit quiet, I think, but we'll fix that in a moment. Okay, that'll do. Let's have a look. What's happening there? There it is. Okay. So we can kind of take this over, turn off the pencil tool, we'll bring it over to the right, get rid of this, we'll drag that out till we reveal all of the individual little hits there. And we can turn this into a normal audio track, turn the input away, have a look at what we've got there. Let's say we loop up the hits that we have. Okay, and let's crank them up here with some volume over here on the left on the clip volume. Could go back and sort of make my output a bit louder, but uh, as you can see, you can always kind of, it's not a problem to turn it up louder later. And now I've got these kind of little vocal FX pieces like so in audio. Let's copy another one of them over. And let's say we just hide automation for a second. Let's just pop into here and just to control that a little bit. Okay, so the whole idea is to have some of these that I could maybe paste and use around the place in different areas. I'm going to call this the Vox FX, let's say. Okay, and for now, I also want to grab one of these and make a reverse version of it, just like so. So I've actually got, fortunately I want to do that again, so I've got two, that's better. And then I can also use that in little areas. So for example, we could have it perhaps here at the end of the break, listen to what that sounds like. Right, so that could be rather cool. And let's just bring the volume down on the reverse one and we'll... Right, and I'll make this twice. I'm going to duplicate that track, and one of them is going to host the reverse, and the other one can host the straightforward. You could keep them both on the same track, they're pretty much identical, but in this case, um, I wouldn't mind just separating just in case we process them differently or wish for a different volume or a different mix outcome. That just gives us the the best of both worlds. But as I said, for the moment, they could live on the same track, but I'm just giving myself a few more options there. So let's call that the rev. And the other one is the straight. 
So back to the original one, granulator switched off, it's done its job for the moment. Might come back to that, could make more parts, sample another section of the vocal, etc. Hopefully that's opened your eyes to using the granulator and a vocal um, to come up with a nice little interesting uh, vocal FX part. tweaking its volume a little bit all right Okay, so up in here where I copied previously this change of kick pattern, I'm actually wanting, I think, just a little bit more like just a kick or two removed. Lauren Bouchard, thanks for sharing. Well, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you being here. Hope you're finding today's stream interesting and uh, beneficial in an ideal world. Thanks for letting me know you're there. Uh, all right, so let's drop in here. This little kick removed just to make that transition there. Okay, so we obviously need to pop our automation on again just to see what themes we're continuing, if any. And as we're working our way to the peak here, we kind of want to be sort of like continually building up the energy a little bit more now in this section here is the second sort of section of the verse let's say perhaps and I'd want to be I want to sort of start getting um, you know some more energy into here as we build up to the peak and again the peak was sort of placed where it is doesn't mean it has to live where it currently is but it does sort of look timeline wise about right so let's say for the moment we're joining up to this peak here and as i said i'd really like for the moment the energy to sort of ramp on up there so let's so look at what we've got going on so the tablet could come in here and carry its way all the way to the peak um this i think the clip one like it was used in the intro suits a bit more the break so i think it will definitely live in the break and the break is currently how many bars? Only eight. So I think that's sort of also falling into a little bit of a kind of trap there of where that's sitting on the timeline. You know, I don't want to f make, give myself, uh, have to hurry to, to, to kind of get towards the outro. So maybe the break will come further, further to the left. Um, let's see, find out in a little bit. Okay, so around about here, let's see what we're doing here. So we've got a bit of a theme going here that may carry on. That is a different clip, just refreshing myself with what we've got going on here. So let's say we copy that again, this again. By the way, Lauren, I hope I pronounced your name properly. Uh, apologies if I didn't, Lauren. Um, sorry if I didn't get that quite right. Um, all right, so we're going across there. All right, let's have a little listen here. Yeah, I don't want to overuse that vocal, so I think we might have it again here, or actually, when this one happens 
even though it was recorded with a bit of delay, I think will automate the Ableton's return, send and return delay workflow here. So this kind of delays into this space over here. Let's make it a lot to hear what it sounds like. Yeah, something like that. And then you can hear it's already gone by that point. So that might well make that feel a bit more natural. And we could also even have a bit of a combination like this. It's also another idea. Yeah, that's nice. And then we could perhaps take the delay automation off now, now that I've added the straight as well. Let's have a listen. Yeah. Come back to those and adjust their volume a bit later on. Try taking this percussion out when the tabla comes in, see what that feels like. Base, haven't been there for a little while. This is super background, so it doesn't make a difference if it's there or not. That is a question for sure to ask. I think I can just detect that it's there, so let's make it a little bit more obvious. So that's the things folks that's a real big tip right in there is like if there's anything that you can't really hear um, and you have to check in and things like that if it's not really audible then it doesn't need to be there it is taking up frequency it's going to make your mix suffer it's it's you know if it's going to be there that is this particular sounds um, for my ears I need to know that it, that's contributing something to this section of the track otherwise it, it just will be muted there as it's not really being missed. And it's borderline at the moment. If I take it away, it's kind of, I notice it's gone, but only just. So I'm just trying to make it trying to make it more obvious that it is opening up there. So you can hear when it's by itself, it's very obvious. It's competing hard with the chords, I would believe. So perhaps those chords at some point, that would be a mixing kind of thing where these two would need to be looked at. And you could make a note somewhere there, pop that on a pad to check in mixing if you forget those kind of things, because those two, when the chords come out there, this is more obvious that it's doing its role. And that tells me something that um, those would need looking at in the mix. So let's copy that theme over. Um, what else do we want to copy perhaps again? Similarly, 
I'll probably keep going with my little fill of the snare as that's kind of nice on every transition. It's very subtle, probably not picked up all the time as to it happening. I want this big kick removal at some point, but I think just before the peak. So I'm going to just copy that over to that location. Well, actually, that we just do that again. Copy that over to there. Okay, you don't want to play ball. Let's just say that area there is muted, so that'll do. Okay, so that's just to remind myself to do that. And so we're looking at here. So what I'm thinking to do, let's feel the energy again. Okay, so I just realized these chords are still without the middle uh, interval. So that is a great opportunity here. So if the chords are going to carry on over here, then let's reveal that. So let's call this clip three and then this can be two. And here, let's bring in our third intervals. I'd forgotten for so long that they were out. So that's going to potentially make a nice change there. So I need to fix the automation up. So this clip is different here in the melody section. So let's kind of do a bit of coloring. I'll bring this down a bit and restart it. Yeah, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit hollow in here. So I might do something a little bit different.
Okay, so I'm gonna try something here. Had a bit of an idea. So instead of maybe the melody of this new clip coming here, I just wanna see what this feels like if I switch on the gate and start gating the chords at this point in time. It's a bit early. I mean, I've just changed from no third note to chords that are the full chords, but let's see what this feels like just as an experiment. Okay, so let's have a look what happened there. Okay, so I understand what's going on there. The gate input also needs to be, this trigger track down here needs to be on and connected to that. It needs to be receiving a trigger. Try it and see how it sounds. Um, I would maybe like to bring it later though, I think. Well, yeah, I'm not so sure, but um, let's see how it goes. Perhaps we'll try it like that for now and um, come back and see what it feels like. But as I said, there's a bit of things going on. I could also, what I might do actually, I could kind of bring this back and bring those full accords in earlier. That might be the answer so it doesn't feel kind of like that we wasted, um, that the only that change happened for a very short amount of time. Whereas in this case, it kind of equals out what's going on with the chords without the interval and the chords with. So that might be the answer there. Spread it out a bit. So now into what we're calling the peak here, which should really be, we've almost exposed the peak, I think, really. Um, this to me was probably likely to be the breakdown now. So almost six to where it says the peak is kind of the peak. And again, we could have brought extra percussion here, perhaps if we want a bit more tension as well. Let's try that. Right, so I'm going to call that like now into the main um, chorus, we might say, or break down, let's phrase it like that. And so my peak actually is a bit more there. Um, and this is going to be, as I said, more into chorus slash breakdown. And how many bars would we like that to be for the moment? So this is 16 across there. If I zoom out a bit, 
and I'll just take for a second a portion of my kick drum over here just after the bridge I just want to stretch that out so I can kind of see where I might want to make this track length roughly and then uh, we'll figure that out later but maybe to there so you can see there's sort of we're, we're working in equal sort of sections here which is helpful so there would be another marker there another marker where it says the bridge that's 16 bars so this would be post the breakdown if we were doing that and then we'd have that many bars post the bridge if we have a bridge and we'd sort of be looking at that as 16 bar segments going on our way out so as we step into this area then being the main break let's have a little listen and figure out what's going to stay in how it's going to develop and work its way through here um, and sometimes what I'll do as a tip is I'll go through and I'll essentially draw through all the sort of say percussion parts in this area here so again we can turn off the automation bit for a moment and I'll just zero them out with my keyboard um, I'll leave the bass for a moment but what that allows me to do is I can then kind of like you know bring things back in and out and decide what's going to stay in here and what's going to what what's going to be taken away so you kind of remove everything and then add it back in as to what you feel it needs and I'd like a bit of connection to what happens before the break and then I'd like um, maybe let's see te tease it out in the second section of here is going to be a bit different I'm also going to take this one chord here that I've not really actually used anywhere bring that over here somewhere just so it's out of the way what is it four chords all right so it's another note extension on top of the current chords we've got going on which are just triads which is great so we've got plenty up our sleeve so we might have that come in over here uh, as another kind of variation of those chords let's say we copy the chords into the first half of the break and they are gated I believe still let's check that so the gate is indeed on the gate trigger also needs to be happening wherever the gate is otherwise it was silence like before filter frequency wise we went way up here to get that tension before the break at some point that's going to come all the way down again to quite soft but we'll figure that out in a moment we'll sort of make a point see where we're going so again I hope you're enjoying the live stream if you're with me in this Sunday stream in Ibiza arranging this electronica track uh, give us a thumbs up drop a comment in the chat say hello introduce yourself let you let me know where you tune in listening from if you've got any questions add them there and of course if you're enjoying the content on this channel like comment and subscribe goes without saying helps the channel a lot and I appreciate it a lot all right <music> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so I want to change this from one to two of the drone types. Just working hard on the tension and release here. You can also see why it's a good idea perhaps or hear why it's a good idea here to mute quite a few parts. If you're trying to listen to the full song in this area, it's very hard to understand kind of what's contributing where and how to this tension in this break. And by removing a lot of it, particularly the percussion at the moment, that's not competing with what I'm doing. It's mainly the instruments and even this part that's here, this is not right yet. So if we take that away, it's really just the voices and the chords and the bass. So let's maybe do something a bit kind of wobbly here, potentially. So that could be cool, but a bit faster. So perhaps it starts slow and then speeds up. So maybe we come into here. Whoops quite like that. Let's just make this lane a little bit bigger. Zoom in a bit. And in this area here, kind of want at some point for it to kind of get a bit faster and then maybe slow down again. It's just ideas. <laughs> All right, kind of interesting, I think. And let's say we highlight all of those. We can bring up our little handles like this. Try that out. 
live dangerous here and go even faster oops Yeah, quite original and what's interesting is when that speeds up the chords have the gate turned off so kind of unique. See what happens if we pull this chord note back, the last chord. I need to refine this a little bit, but I'll come back to that. Nice, so we've got a lot of energy out at the end of the break here, which should make the impact coming out of the break working really good. So let's see what it's like to have a bit of this percussion in now. Right back to the start of the break and a bit before it. Okay, so maybe not the clap. Let's try also here, there's two percussion tracks. Let's try track one that I started with in the intro as it's a bit more stripped. And also up here in the 808 drum kit track, let's have a copy over of just the rim shot. As currently in here, we've got the, the full kit. So let's say we take the full kit away from up here. So if we were to put that clip in, you would see that all of the hits are, are in. So let's say we remove that and we try out because I've already got examples of it. Let's say we just try the rim shot on its own. Mm -hmm. 
sure about this, just going to remove the automation I think. And let's have a look at the very first one of those and just see if I have a pattern that I have not copied over here. Yeah, it's kind of this I think is what I'm looking for. Let's take that from early on and bring that into that space there. There's more what I had in mind. May not stay though, that part, but for now it's there. And so the tabla is completely out, and I think it could stay completely out. Yep, don't think we need that at all. But what I might do here is towards the end of this second half of this break, we might have a bit of a rebuild. This percussion loop here, do we have a filter on it that we have access to? We do not. So let's have a little auto filter on here and do a little bit of automation on it so it sort of opens up in here. So let's say first device on and off, on, off, on, off there, pop that down and then let's have a bit of a high cut and we want to open it up to there, but we want to start from much more closed, muted sort of sounds. Really like what these vocals are kind of bringing in here, maybe with this reverse one at the very end here. Perhaps we could bring it earlier. Not quite like that. So what I might just try and do is just soften it at this end. Let's 
trying to keep the maximum energy out in, out in here a little bit. Not so bad. And that will really again help our drop in a moment. So with the baseline. Well, that one last note, it just kind of helps because there's not much else. It's only really that and the vocal. Plus that little clap, right, that are carrying that space. Let's try this one on, this one off. And let's maybe automate the delay send in this area here. Turn on the pencil tool to do that. Yep, just like that. Pencil tool back off and I'll just ramp this down once that's happened. So it fades to silence and I'll use my little trick here of the curve. Nice. So what does it sound like on the other side of the break? Kind of want it to die away to silent there, so... Right, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so now the post the other side of the brakes here, the break here, should I say. So we've got this kind of breakdown. Let's kind of re go back and just reveal the break and how it feels. Does it make sense? Uh, it doesn't with solo on, let's try now. Yeah, this one, I'm going to bring the volume down a bit on it as well, inside the clip, just to make that one a softer. Oops, let's try that again. Yeah, that's better. Just made it a little bit quieter so that it's not as dominant in that little area. As I said, we're washing out a lot of energy there and we've not sort of automated reverbs or anything crazy in here. We're just kind of working with the parts and getting some intention and release from it. And I kind of muted this pad drone. Let me put it in and just see if it really needs to be there or not. So I think if you're going to use this, you'd have it kind of reverse of what's happening there at the moment. So you'd be opening it up to add this kind of noise in the back. And where do we start from? Right at the beginning of the track, we had it automated at 171, so it can be, you know, hardly audible at the start. Kind of got so used to it not being there, I'm not sure that it needs to be there.
Yeah, perhaps like that if if needing to use it but again if I take this away well yeah actually it kind of fills out the body of the sound a bit there so come back and have a look at that perhaps but um, sit on it for a moment it also is very static and it needs a little bit of kind of movement going on in it, some automation of sorts. To get it a little bit more interesting. So I think I actually have on there an auto pan, which I do. So let's say we automate the panning amount in here as well, just to get this a little bit more sexier. Maybe we don't do amount, but we do instead the rate. Could be interesting. that was a little bit more successful, a little bit more interesting with the rate automated. So if we listen to it in isolation, you can hear what it's doing, right? But it's very much background that sound and as I said it could be deemed as unnecessary later on but it is adding some body and interest in that area all right so let's jump to post break and see what we're going to bring back in here and how things are going to work so we've got the four chords here question is are they going to be gated or not gated there find that out in a moment Percussion one or two, as we had two in the peak, we might keep two as the theme here. We want to keep up that some of that energy as we come out of the break. Another little tip there, when you come out of the break, uh, we want that sort of a bit of an impact there that we've ended the break and we started something, but try and keep your energy here. You'll very often find that this section of the track here is very much a mirror of what was happening here. It could be a little bit different, but the idea being that it kind of matches the energy of that area. If it's a lot lower than that, it can it can fall flat on its face and it doesn't really make sense as post break, we went down a long, long way in energy. So try and keep your energy similar to that. It could be a little bit different, as I said, but it probably won't work too well if it's a really massive dip in energy. Let's just get some automation that I've used before post breaks so, like so the baseline i think we can continue this theme that i've got going with the automation of that um, and that actually can stretch pretty much all the way to the end it might come out in the bridge as it hasn't come out before all the way through the track so that might be a great place to give us a little break from it as an idea there and if we're copying this automation over post break we might continue with the rest of the theme ish are you not up here something like that 
plus or minus as we say in Spanish. All right, so clap also is going to extend across to there. Two in the percussion might actually go into the bridges two, and then let's say we roll back out the one as the outro percussion. And this two over here is kind of surplus, so we can get rid of that. We need to know where the, the, new, the two different clips are. So we copy that over. The tabla is making an appearance before the break and after again, so that's okay. Um, melody wise, I had a whole section here that I haven't used. So I might copy that over. Uh, it isn't being used here at all. And two hasn't been used still yet. There's sort of, oh yes, it has right at the very beginning. So there's a few variations of that going on. Pad drone, we've gone into this type of drone. Maybe one was happening in the peak again. So perhaps we go back to one, the more sequenced drone. And there's a bunch of automation missing there that's important. So filter, frequency, let's filter this down to show automated parameters only, auto filter, there it is there, that's what I want to see because that one there can go, minus that, filter on is still on, so that's okay. But this automation here, again I want to sort of carry some of these themes over, so maybe I can reuse that theme of where it started over here, something similar to that. And again, could come further in and see what happens later. Perhaps we wind up with some of the two over here at the very, very end. Could be nice to sort of filter down to that. So at the moment, whoops, watch out for that. At the moment I'm just using my eyes for a second and just thinking about themes that I want to repeat so I can do that without having to listen for a moment. It gives us a break as well from the music for a second. Let's copy that little bit of automation there. And actually we're probably going to come all the way down. Something like that. Okay. And the vocal theme, so we've got that going on. We might give ourselves a little break from it being too much. These were extras, so we don't need those. And we're going to copy this little one here, and we can have that say, oops, not quite like that, there. And trigger track is around if we're gating the chords. So in this area here, Let's try it without the gate and with the gate so we can mute those and say leave the gate on should get the same result although actually I'd, I'd, just to be safe I'll try that gate off filter open. I quite like it without the gate again, the more I kind of listen to it. It's 
So let's have our transitional elements again that we've been using, themes. The bass can come up a bit here, I think. It's a bit quiet. try and filter the bass out here so I can remove it from the bridge. So just getting into the last 15 minutes or so of this week's stream, I'm edging my way towards the outro. It might be again that I need to kind of continue this in the next stream, but I hope you're enjoying seeing this track arrangement in real time in Ableton Live and you're finding it beneficial to, you know, the dark art of arranging your music and kind of approaches here, that, what, how important automation is, feeling out the tension and release, what we're trying to, what I'm trying to achieve here with what I'm doing. Um, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, of course, small favor that I ask, uh, like, comment and subscribe. It does the channel a lot of good and I appreciate it very much. Thank you. All right, let's carry on here. Make the last five minutes count. F uh, 15, should I say. So that was nice. I wanted the melody to come back in there. We've had a good break from that. Uh, clip number two of the chords is the triads. I'm not sure that we need that there. That could, if the chords are coming back again, um, happen a little bit later. So again, we can give ourselves a bit more of these um, four note chords that were new after the break. That was nice because at the other side of the break here, again, we've got new things happening, uh, such as these four note chords. These were triads with the third interval. Uh, these were triads where I've removed the third interval. So there's a nice progression within the chords themselves there, which is adding some interest here. So let's have a listen to the, the chords in the break as well. And we need the filter up a bit. Yeah, the idea could be to fade them right down there. So essentially they don't have to come back in after this bridge, the chords I'm speaking of. I might do this little repeat of the vocal. Nice. I'm enjoying that. Let's take out a little bit of energy at the end here. What have we got? Okay, so we've got the hi hats up there. So let's say at the very end here again of the bridge. Thank you. 
right, so we can remove some, again, a bit of energy there. Sounds about right. So maybe we'll kind of round out with a bit more of the melody. Tablers come out. So we're removing a bit of energy here. like another of my little transitional ornaments here on the clap. And I'd also like a little kick removal, something like what I have up here. remind you what that sound is. Xavi Diaz, yes, a good arrangement makes a big difference. Absolutely. It's the storytelling. It's the part that, uh, yeah, often feels like a bit of a, a struggle sometimes of how are we going to, you know, take those song idea parts and then sort of turn them into a framework and turn them into a song. So I hope you're finding this beneficial and giving you some keys to the front door of how you can go about that, particularly in this style of music. Okay, so we want a bit of a change there. We're starting to get into that sort of boring over repetitive area. So this doesn't need to be copied anymore. The, this little bridge melody that ended up sort of being in the bridge, but it got used a bit earlier. And what I want to do is return to sort of some theme that I've used again earlier when I was stripping things down a bit. So that could be a return to this melody or thinning it out, which I'd quite like to do. So I'll try one of those there and then afterwards I would be wanting to sort of thin it out to the outro because we're well and truly into the outro territory now. So if we're looking here, you know, this sort of 16 bars here where I've kind of finished the bass is where I want to start really taking parts away and kind of winding up. we've got here so that clip can be removed as well we don't need that anymore that was good and I think we can have a little vocal transition in here as well haven't used it for a while
we'll have this a bit more moodier here. So more dubbed out. In this case, more filtered out. It's already preparing us for the outro more. Right, so let's try something here. Let's also say we take out some percussion here, strip it down a bit more. So maybe not that, but in the 808 kit itself, maybe in this area. So all the way from here to here. Let's give that another color so we know it's gonna be something a little bit different. And let's say the room shots we muted in this area here and the clap takes over. Yeah, I'm not sure it's not working the way I hoped. All right, well, the other option is, might be that is the better option, I think. Something also that could be interesting to try here is I have another kick pattern somewhere in one of these. So that's hi-hats only. This is the drum kit of the rim shot only somewhere around. It's this one here. Yeah, let's copy that and let's live dangerous. We like to live dangerous sometimes and let's see if we can have that coming in here somewhere, maybe even right in here and filling all this area with a new broken sort of kick pattern. See what it sounds like. Yeah, it's a bit too much, so Ah, that has all the kicks out. So what happened there? Let's try that again. I felt like there was one that I had with the some kicks in. Yeah, so that has some bass drums down there, just a few. Let's try that again. Okay, there you are. So let's say we drag it out. That's what's happening, I get it. Okay, it's not looping, not a problem. We can fix that. So we can do it a few ways. We can just do that for now. And then consolidate that. And then maybe see what that sounds like. too much groove change for me so let me write it a little bit different so down here in the bass drum let's mute all of the bass drums and then let's have a bit of a breaks pattern see what it sounds like so we're going to leave two notes empty two notes empty play like this and let's do So four bars worth and hey, that, not that, okay, and loop that one up and then just drag that across or maybe not, Let's say okay, we'll play the game a bit different, loop that area better. Okay, that's good. Now we drag it across. Okay, 
let's do something about this coming down more. So let's make this last bit make sense. Okay, so maybe we copy that over for two of those. So what we'll do here, I'm just going to use the second filter, switch that on, open it out, make it a high cut in, in the wavetable itself. And then I'm just going to automate that at the end here just to filter this out a little bit. So fully open, coming down in the end here. Maybe we'll have this brakes come in a little later, so we'll have the normal kick pattern after that little transition. And then we'll drop into the brakes. Well, I don't know actually, kind of got used to it now. something fun here with the voice as well if we hold down shift on our keyboard and grab the left edge of it we should be able to stretch this out and turn it into a much longer effect so let's try that again we'll take it as far as we can almost right up to that other one so that should give us a nice little interesting part at the end here and let's kind of Turn it down further. Nice. Let me just smooth that out. The real value in making your own little transitional pieces, right? You've got... Ah, cut me off right at the ends. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, didn't need to stretch this one, I think. It's a bit too much of the same theme. But you get the idea, it was kind of fun with the reverse one. Maybe make this one a bit more traditional. And what we might do, I think I did it before, perhaps. Let's see. Or maybe not. Let's just automate the delay on it. Could even actually do that on the reverse, so. Something like that. All right, so made it to the end. I've run over slightly a couple of hours just to get sort of all the way across to the end. So I might leave you on a playback um, just to feel out what we've got here. And before I do that, I will obviously give this a save. Otherwise, we are flirting with a lot more danger. So we're going to save live set as weekly live stream number 12. Pop it into that folder. Do a collect all and save to make sure all the files are in the project folder. And look, it's been a pleasure. Uh, another Sunday live stream, weekly live stream number 12, uh, arranging in real time this Electronica uh, track idea with Ableton Live, Ableton Live 12 even. Um, I ho hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, you, if you've stuck around to the end here or you're watching this back in replay time, you know, drop us a comment, say hello, let us know what you found beneficial in the video. Let us know, you know what you're finding most challenging in your music production and I'll make a video about that, incorporate that into my live streams. You know, I like to hear from you guys and girls and understand you know, what your challenges are with music production and then we can look into in a live stream. So this track now, pretty good. Probably needs a balance, a little bit of a step back and render it out and have a think. Does the arrangement work? But the arrangement, the framework is there, lots of automation done and it would be a case of sort of balancing it and mixing it. As I've said previously as well, if you've enjoyed the video, you're enjoying the content on the channel, please do like, comment and subscribe. It does help the channel an awful lot and uh, we can help other people also get their arrangements right and their music production. So I'm going to um, mute my microphone, hopefully. Uh, so you won't hear from me again. I'm going to say ciao for now. I'm going to run it through so you can have a little listen. So five or six minutes of the track playback. And then I will catch you guys and girls in next week's Sunday live stream for another round of Ableton Live and music production. Ciao videos. Thanks for sharing the knowledge, Maestro. Well, I'm not sure about Maestro, but um, yeah, appreciate very much your comment and uh, for you being here in the stream with me. So um, muting the mic. Ciao for now. Let's have a playback.